He played 80 games for Tasman. He played four for the Crusaders. <clears throat> then 65 for the Highlanders, five for New Zealand Māori. Joey Wheeler joins us. We're consigned him for Sky Sporties in Christchurch. Joey, welcome to the show, mate. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. Yeah, yeah, you're as surprised as anyone that I've played uh, three seasons in, in dirty old Christchurch and four games for the uh, the Crusaders. But I love my time here. I really did. You're still there. So obviously you're doing this game tomorrow. I just look at the forecast. It's meant to be fine and crisp tomorrow. And I can tell you, dude, that because um, we'll talk about this game after the others, but the uh, the Fiji and Drua only flew out a couple of hours ago. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. But um, I, unfortunately, I'm not doing the, the game this weekend. Oh, okay. I actually got a family wedding on in Christchurch, so all my extended family are, are camp tabs. Um, so, yeah, up here for a family wedding. Was meant to be working the game, but obviously um, family first, Marty, so got a family wedding, which would be nice. Well, it's been wonderful to see you back on the telly, mate. I'm not going to de- delve into what you know went on and that, but it is. It's great to see you on the telly. I love you on the side. And we've got four quarterfinals to talk about, Joey. Tonight, Blues versus Waratahs. And I suppose the overriding question is for fans is, are we going to see an upset at all in any of the four quarters? Answer that first. No. Uh, I think the only game that's going to be um, a, a reasonable, reasonably tight tussle will be the Brumbies v the Canes. But to focus on the Blues v Tars first... I just can't see the Tars getting up. Look, they've limped their way into the quarterfinals. They lost last week. They've got not a hell of a lot of momentum. I know they rung the changes against Moana Pacifica, but the reality is the Blues at home, they, you know, they've they hosted 13 playoff games at Eden Park and only lost two in their history. Um, yeah, they've been not the most compelling prospect, but you look at their result in round nine against the Tars where they thumped them. 55-21, and I look at that Tars performance last week, yeah, they just, oh, I don't know, they, they haven't won a playoff game, I think, since they beat the Crusaders over in Sydney, so I just can't see them upsetting um, the Apple Cart. The, the Blues have just got far too much strike power. They're trying to bully teams, I just don't think they've got their game plan quite right, they haven't got the balance to their, to their team quite right yet, the Blues, but if they can find that form and find it quick, um, we know how much firepower they've got out wide, um, but they could they could really put on a real show uh, tonight for, for their fans. I'm oh, just writing that down there. That, that to me is, I mean, this is why we love having you know love having you on, mate. That perspective right there. I think they are the most unteam team that is in this competition. The Blues. It's almost at times that they're playing two or three different teams on the same field. I mean, trying to coordinate them as a fifteen is probably the most difficult thing. You think that they actually have to do? Yeah, like, you look at the, the performance last week against, you know, the Highlanders, uh, they're a bit of a basket case this year. Like, you know, they're, they're certainly not playing um, anywhere near their potential, and they're a mile off. But the way the Blues went about that, um, trying to dismantle that side, they just tried to bludgeon them. They just tried to bully them. And if there's one strength in the Highlanders, it's been their pack this year, and they didn't go backwards. And, yeah, you just see them going time and time again, like that first 10 minutes of that second half. I think the Blues reset about five or six scrums just trying to bully the Hollanders. It was just ridiculous tactics. So I, I, I just question sometimes why why they're not going to some, uh, you know, giving their athletes and their world, world-class players more time and space and, and actually throwing a little bit of caution to the wind. And I know it's a long time ago, but I was lucky enough to go over and uh, with the Stan Sport team alongside um, my Sky colleagues, Mills Molina and Grant Nisbet for the Melbourne Super Round. And I had a really good chat um, to a good friend and a, and, a, and a coach of mine and a mentor of mine, Leon McDonald, obviously a Tasman lad, Marlborough lad, mm-hmm. um, after their performance. And um, one thing that stuck in my head was uh, a comment he made around Bowden because I said, look, why aren't you guys using the ball more? Like, I want to see this Blues team with all your athletes express themselves. And, and one thing he did say to me was he, he just felt Bowden was a little bit um, cautious and... Um, what, what, like his starter play calls, he was quite conservative in that, which I just found a, a wow. staggering yeah. when you think of Bowden Barrett, you know, and I think it's a reflection of where that team's at, though, that maybe Bowden doesn't quite have the, the confidence of the guys outside him or he's not getting enough voice because then you see a performance from him a couple of weeks later against the Reds where he's playing flat on the line and he's doing Bowden Barrett things and you're like, that's what I want to see from this blue side, that's what's entertaining, not you guys trying to be the Crusaders, but doing it in a Blues way. Look, he's back tonight after missing a couple of weeks. And look, I, I, I think this is so crucial for him over the next couple of weeks because every all-black backline that I'm picking, I can't help but put Mawanga at number 10 
And then if Will Jordan is fit and firing him at 15, which means Bowden Barrett is fighting with McKenzie to come off the bench. And just Joey saying that out loud seems so stupid to say because we know what a great player this guy is. But, you know, part of it is actually getting time in the saddle, isn't it? I mean, how many times has he played first five this year, spent 80 minutes controlling a game of rugby? And, and, and you'll, you'll probably say less than six. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't tell you the exact stats, but yeah, it feels like that, doesn't it, mate? Mm. And yeah, you're, you're right. It's um, it flabbergasts me when you when you say that and you're not picking that Bowden Barrett's one of your first on your team sheet. Um, that you're actually debating whether whether he's going to get a starting jersey. I think he will. Um, I just think you've got to have Bowden Barrett in there. He's just got so much experience, so much class. Two-time World Player of the Year. We know how good he is, but by his own standards, he'll admit that he's he's certainly not um, at the peak of his powers. And where does he fit in? Look, if you're picking on form, you've got to say Damien McKenzie's the 10 for that All Black side, and, and Sean Stevenson's the 15. There but you go. That, won't be the case. that won't be the case, Marty. We know that. But... Uh, you know, he's got to be in there, mate. I think he's going to probably play 15. Um, will Jordan will, will be on the right wing, and then I think they've got to they've got to reward. I mean, it's going to be a flip of the coin whether it's Leicester Fanganuku or Mark Talia because their form has just been so scintillating. I don't think he can put Caleb Clark on the left wing. I just don't think he's shown enough. All right, you're ticking blues over Tars, and I don't think too many people are going to argue about that's that's tonight's game, ladies and gentlemen. And then we've got three tomorrow. Afternoon footy, we love it. Sun on the back, Chiefs versus Reds. I know that the Reds are the only team to beat the Chiefs this year. That was in New Plymouth, and that was with an amazing last defensive stand. However, this is a Chiefs team which is completely different from that side. Look, the Reds are going to come. They know that they can give it a shot. But the Chiefs at home, when you've won 13 out of 14 games, and it's not just that, Joey, but this is what I love about this team. They found different ways to win this year. I was impressed with them uh, blanking the Crusaders' uh, second half in the first match uh, down in Christchurch. I was more impressed when they did it to the Hurricanes in Wellington. And then I was equally impressed when they played a massive defensive effort to shut out the Blues and Hamilton in a game where they played without the ball. So this is a team that you've got to try and figure out how to beat them because they seem to be confident no matter whether they've got the ball or not. Would you agree? Yes, yeah, spot on, mate. You've, you've absolutely nailed it. And I think that this could be a bloodbath. Um, Marty, there's no two ways about it. Obviously, when the Reds tipped them up in round 12, uh, the Chiefs were missing nine players. They've reto- rotated nine players out of that starting side, and and that was that was evident that they were clunky. They were um, they were a little bit at sea, and that and that plucky, gritty um, Queenslander, any Queenslander. you know. Brand- yeah, any Bradthorne coach side, they're going to defend with their heart on their sleeve. And that's what they did that night. They forced the Chiefs into mistakes. And I think that maybe is the blueprint, is if you bring a real defensive um, pressure that they haven't seen. And what they did, Marty, is in that game, they actually didn't commit a hell of a lot to the ruck. They just backed their defence. They made their tackles. They made big defensive tackles. And they just filled the field with, with 14 men on their feet. So... What they were doing was saying, look, we know how good you guys are and you can skin teams because your speed of ruck is so, so good. So we're not even going to contest there. We're going to wait for the right time to have a crack. And look, their handling wasn't great that night in New Plymouth, but I don't expect them to, to make that same mistake again. They're going to be seeking a little bit of revenge and they're going to be right on mentally. And I think they were probably just a, a touch off um, in that game. And that's that's all that that, that red side needed to, to sniff blood. So yeah, I just think that they're going to be too strong across the board. And not like you said, they've got numerous ways of winning games, whether it's defensively or whether it's with their scintillating attack. And the way Tammy McKenzie and Brad Weber and uh, Sean Stevenson, the spine of that team, are leading this side around, they are so, so competent. Like, I've been super impressed with Damian McKenzie's um, tactical ability and um, the way he's executed that. I think his time in Japan has taught him that you know, to be a world-class team, you need to stamp your mark on the game. You need to, um, you know, put your team in the right end of the field and you need to do that time and time again. That's been one criticism of Damian McKenzie over the years is, is his tactical awareness as good as the likes of Bowden Barrett, Richie Moanga. I think what we've seen this year is, yeah, it is. It's brilliant. And he is stamping his mark on not only this team, but this competition. He's been um, exceptional. And I hope he carries that form on uh, into the playoffs because we know how... Uh, you know, tight these matches can be, especially probably not so much um, quarterfinals, but because uh, you look at the matchups and they're probably pretty one-sided. But usually, when you're going into uh, semi-final footy, it'll it'll be tight affairs. Yeah, well said. I think that you know he's one of the few that's come back from a sabbatical in Japan, and he actually seems to be playing some of his best footy, doesn't he? So that's the Chiefs Reds. Then the Crusaders versus 
the Indrua. And again, fascinating that this match during the round robin, the Indrua won. And again, it was it was a Crusaders side that was a weakened side. We were all shocked by that. The Fiji and Indrua at home, five of six, Joey. Uh, however, it's a completely different game when it's played in Christchurch. I'm not just talking about the weather. I'm talking about the fact that this is the A-team that they put up, despite the fact that they've got injuries. This would be a monumental upset if the Andrua can do it again. And I kind of wonder whether they played their final last week when they actually beat the Reds and got through to the quarters. Yeah, oh, look, uh, there's no two ways about it. Coming down to Christchurch and taking on a, a Crusaders side that will be absolutely primed for this. They're not going to be mentally at sea. They have what, they've got their, the best side possible that they can pick out on the park. Uh, it'll be a chilly, chilly um, Christchurch night, so the Fijians won't like that. Um, yeah, this this could go one of two ways. It could be a really tight affair, uh, Marty. I think if the Crusaders let it get loose and let the Fijians sort of... I suppose, play that style of rugby that's just in their DNA where, where they're throwing the ball around. And if the Crusaders buy into that, then it could be a little bit tighter than we're all expecting. I think the Crusaders will still be too good, but it could be a little bit closer. But I just see the Crusaders doing Crusader things at home, rolling their sleeves up, keeping it really, really tight and just suffocating the life out of this and draw side and just giving them nothing. The, the Crusaders at home through playoffs, I read a stat during the week, I think they're 20 27 from 27 yeah, in yeah, playoffs. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. So it's just crazy stats. So you've, you've got to do everything right, and they've probably got to do everything wrong for the driller to have a chance of winning this tonight. Fourth and final quarter final then. So we're going with the seedings. We're going with the Blues. We're going with the Chiefs. We're going with the Crusaders. Brumbies versus Canes. I don't think this is a huge upset if the Hurricanes win in Canberra. This is a double header, of course, because you've got the Oval Ball Rugby tonight and uh, and then the Wawas against the Raiders tomorrow. So it'll be interesting to see which is... Sorry, the other way around. You've got the Wawas tonight, sorry, against Canberra. And then you've got uh, Saturday night, Brumbies versus Canes. See what kind of crowd turns up for both matches. Look, this is a game that the Hurricanes can win. I think that, you know, they must be feeling... As, as though they've left too much out there because not being able to beat any of the New Zealand teams except the Highlanders is extremely frustrating as a Hurricanes fan. I feel that, you know, we've shown enough in some games this year against the Crusaders, against the Chiefs. Could have won these games, could have, should have, didn't. Oh, look, I think the the, Chris, uh, the Hurricanes for me, mate, is actually my smoky to potentially go all the way in this competition. Um, reasons being, uh, last week that... 40-minute performance that they put out to beat the Crusaders at home was some of the most complete rugby that they've pieced together this year. They will take a lot of confidence. They'll take a lot of momentum. And we know that this Hurricanes team, when they are confident, uh, they are so hard to beat. They've got so many good athletes across the board, across the park, that can turn games on their head. There's a reason why they are the top team in terms of clean breaks and line breaks in this competition, top team in terms of metres made post-contact, and top team in terms of offloads in the tackle. That That's that there, top team in terms of offloads, that's their point of difference. So they score tries and their attacking ability is better than anyone. And the confidence that they'll get through their set piece and the, the way that they dismantled the Crusaders will give them so much hope. We know that the Brumbies at home are a really, really tough proposition. They obviously tipped the Hurricanes up there in a the quarterfinal last year, so they'll be super confident. But I just think when this Hurricanes team is on, um, they are they are going to be tough to beat, man. And, and I look at the combination of Roy Gard, Brett Cameron and Geordie Barrett. What they've got there, they've got you know, Roy Gard, who's just setting this competition on fire in terms of his play at nine. They've got Brett Cameron, who is so understated. He does everything right for that team, and he puts them in the right areas of the field. He makes really, really good decisions, and he gives the ball and he gives the guys outside him opportunity to, to express themselves. And he does it at the right times. And Geordie Barrett is just coming of age. He's getting better every every week he plays in that 12 jersey. And I just think that the workmanlike uh, attitude of their pack and if Dane Coles stays being his pesty, no, irritating, brilliant. niggly, yeah. he can single-handedly put that game around yep, for, the, yep. for, the, for the Hurricanes against the Crusaders, mate. But I was lucky enough to be working on that game, and I saw it. The whole crowd, 18,000 people, got in behind what he was doing. Uh, he just put on a masterclass of tactical mind games. And, and normally a guy like Cody Taylor, who is unflappable, like ultimate professional, world-class hooker, like he was rattled. Get, and when you see Cody Taylor getting rattled and some of those senior players from the Crusaders getting rattled, you're like, 
Kelsey's doing a fantastic job here. And that's, at the end of the day, what turned that game in their favour and, and their athletes as well. So, look, I, I think they're a real, a real chance. Obviously, um, they're going to probably meet the Chiefs in, um, if they can get through this quarterfinal, meet the Chiefs in the semi. But I, I, I'd seriously think that they've got the potential to go all the way this year, Marty, which I'm sure is music to your ears as a Canes fan. Joey Wheeler with us. Thank you so much for that. A quick message in from a an M... Watson, apologise to me. Who says? <laughs> who says the Blues are a better team without Bowden Barrett? Okay, can we collectively give this bloke a slap, mate? He needs one, doesn't he? Just, get, just, just. Oh. So the, the narrative is idiotic, Mark. Can we just yeah, right. establish that? Yeah, exactly, mate. Yeah, I, I mean, I love Mark's opinion, but he's gone. He's gone one step too far with that one, hasn't he, Muddy? Bloody ridiculous. Joey, thanks so much, mate. Enjoy your wedding. Let's catch up again before the end of the yeah, season. Love to, mate. Cheers, Joey yeah. Wheeler with us. Plenty of games for the Highlanders, also Tasman. Uh, just a handful for the Crusaders.